Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Pendangolan Advisor and welcome to my guide regarding the hacking and cloaking mechanics in Endless Space 2 Penumbra DLC. I decided to create this guide for the very simple reason that I noticed a lot of people struggling to understand exactly how these mechanics work. So in this video I'm hoping to explain all of the inconsistencies that you might be getting into and I'll try to make everything clear for you. Keep in mind, this is not Umbroqua specific advice, so if you want to know more about playing as these guys, you will have to wait until my next guide, which hopefully will be published tomorrow, or maybe even today, depending on how fast I can work. But either way, the link will be in the description or maybe in a playlist or whatever. Doesn't matter, just check my guides. This is the first one, however, because it's more important and it's more generalized. So, with that in mind, let's start by talking about hacking itself. The first thing I need to say about hacking is that no matter what faction you play as, you have access to hacking all the way from turn 1. As soon as you load into a game, you can simply press the spacebar and start hacking uh, whatever you want. There are some limits, of course. You start, typically speaking, with one hacking operation and you will not be able to hack more than one thing at a time. But as you go along with the game and unlock more technologies, you can increase the amount of simultaneous hacking operations that you can achieve. And in order to increase the limit, you have to go into technology screen and find technologies such as this one, which allows you to increase the hacking operation and the first one is in autonomous materials. And then you can also find some more later down the line. So this is the most important thing. The second thing about hacking is uh, that uh, there are certain things you can hack and certain things you can't hack. Again, this is very specific to non umbroqua factions. Umbroqua have different limits, so again, their limits and their capabilities will be covered in another guide. But if, uh, if you're playing as anybody other than umbroqua, then generally speaking, you can, well, for instance, Allow me to cancel my hack so I can demonstrate some more hacks. So, cancelling hack is pretty easy, you just right click on a hack in progress and you can cancel it at any given time. It does come at a cost, which I'll explain in a moment. But anyway, hacking is relatively easy. You just have to click on a point of origin that being a system you currently occupy. It can be your home system, it can be your uh, expansion, it can be anything else that you currently control. And in order to cancel your selection, you of course have to just simply right click. So once you select what where you want to hack from, then you have to select what you want to hack. There are a few options. For instance, you can hack a minor faction, and in order to confirm that as a target, you simply have to press yes, or you can decide that this is not your final destination, and you can just keep clicking, left clicking on other destinations, plotting a curves course to your final hack. Now this might be something that you decide that you might believe to be unimportant, but being able to plot the course of your hack is actually very important, for the reason that I'll show you right now. People can counter your hacking me uh, methods. For instance, right now I am trying to hack the Unfallen over in this system, and my hack is going out from my cancer system. And as you can see, there is a little notification that I have, which lets me know that my hacking operation has triggered the enemy defensive program. Defensive programs are what allows people to detect the fact that somebody else is hacking them and they run a trace program. So, if my hacking is the blue line that you can see right here, then the enemy trace program is the red line that you can see here. And as you can see, it is going to reach my uh, hacking system on this turn. As soon as I press the N10 button, the enemy will finish their trace, which will forcibly cancel my hack and, more importantly, it will also provide me with certain penalties for uh, for completing the trace program. So the enemy will be able to choose what they want to do after they have counter-hacked me successfully. This, however, is an unusual situation because I'm also only one turn away from hacking the enemy system. This means that if I, when I press the N10 button, uh, assuming I'm able to, uh, because I have one more hacking operation to fulfill and the game will warn me about that. But as soon as I press the N10 button, the enemy will finish the counter trace and impose penalties on my system, but my hack will still finish. If my hack was not yet ready to be finished, if it would take any more than one turn to finish by the time the enemy is about to ha counter hack me, then my hack would be cancelled and all of the progress would be undone, which is quite substantial. Anyway, so how do you cancel counter hacking, you may ask? 
First of all, you may simply guess. For instance, recently I guessed that my enemy has no defensive programs on Hadar. It is, after all, a relatively new expansion, and the defensive programs cost you bandwidth, the finger you have right here. So you don't have the bandwidth to usually protect every single system you have, you just protect the systems that are most important, leaving some other systems vulnerable. So you can simply guess, if I were to hack the enemy home system on Quadrus, it would probably trigger an alarm and the enemy would be able to counter-hack me. However, instead I decided to hack Hadar, which was undefended, and I rightly guessed that it was undefended, and this allows me to hack in peace. But what if you want to hack a system that you know is protected? For instance, what if I wanted to hack Indusa, which is a system controlled by the Vodiani and most likely very well defended with defensive programs? Well, in order to do that, I simply have to plot a course that is unusual. For instance, I can simply, instead of just going into this right away and starting the hack, I can go on a different route. I can go like this to Herolium first and then to Indusa. This would extend the time it would take for me to hack, but it would also extend the time it would take for the enemy to run a trace program. Trace programs are always faster than hacking programs, but they're not extremely fast. So if you have a route that is convoluted and long enough, then you should be able to hack the enemy even if they have defensive programs. You can make it even more ridiculous. For instance, maybe if I were super crazy, I could run a hack that goes like this. It would take 21 turns to finish, but mark my words, there's no trace program that would be able to actually trace me before I can take control over the enemy. There is a downside to this. Every system you pass through can also have defensive programs. So even though these systems are owned by minor factions, these minor factions may also have defensive programs and they will trace me and they can still cancel my hack even if my hack is not directed against those minor factions. They do not know who I'm trying to hack, so they'll defend against any hacks indiscriminately, even if they are your allies. So this is something to keep in mind, the same thing applies to players. Now, what about the benefits of a hack? Well, allow me to showcase that to you real quick. As we finish the turn, and my hack competes over on Guiana. So, if we dismiss all of the unimportant notifications, you'll be able to find out that firstly, the enemy hack counter-hacking operation has finished. The enemy was able to trace me back to cancer and has imposed some kind of penalties to me. But, because I was able to finish the hack at the very last moment, I still get to pick my personal rewards. So, you have different types of empires you can hack. You can hack minor factions, you can hack pirates, and you can hack major factions. When you hack minor factions, you are able to, for instance, increase the approval rating of you, which I would have strongly recommend. It is a very big boost to their relationships. You can impersonate an ambassador for an, uh, of an enemy player, which uh, would lower this faction's uh, standing with that particular player, you can also steal from them, even when they are at war, this would give you relation rewards, even if they hate you, you can still get their rewards, and you can also do a bunch of other things, for instance, you can create a back door, which I'll showcase in a second. When it comes to pirates, rewards are similar, although, if I dare say so myself, they are slightly weaker. When you hack a pirate base, you can steal some of the resources, and you can also change the relations with certain players or yourself, not too useful, I'd rather just kill the pirates, but you can of course do that. World of Warring cover, pirates are notorious for having very good defensive progress, and also pirates can hack you as well, and they sometimes do. So not only the major factions can hack you, the pirates can hack you as well. So always watch out for that. So let us have a quick look-see, because I hacked two systems this turn. First of all, I hacked a system belonging to a major faction on Hadar. If you hack this kind of system, you have the following options. You can create a back door. This would allow all my future hacks to originate from Hadar. So if I were to create that, I would be able to hack from Hadar, let's say, all the way to Polaris, without having to start the hack in, let's say, Zuben or Rassam. The other option I have is to embed a sleeper agent. A sleeper agent would provide me limited information about a system, and uh, if you have enough sleepers, you'll be able to start leeching Empire's resources, which I'll showcase in a moment. You can influence politics, which uh, forces the system's politics to change to a selected political party. You can injure a figurehead, which is basically a nice way of saying that you will try to murder an innocent hero. He's a governor of a system. And finally, you can jam commands, which will help you if you try to 
the attack an enemy system on the ground, which is very helpful if you're trying to conquer a system that has very, very good defenses. In order to showcase the, uh, the backdoor mechanic, I'm going to create a backdoor right now. As you can see, a backdoor has been created on the system. Hold on a second. And now I am able to start a hacking operation from Hada to some other system. For instance, uh, Polaris itself. This does, technically speaking, count as running a trace through Hadar. So if enemies do trace me back all the way to Hadar, my backdoor can be detected and my backdoor can be destroyed. However, the benefit of a backdoor is that all nearby systems are easier to hack. So generally speaking, it is good to have a network of backdoors near a system that you want to continuously hack. Also, if you have two backdoors next to each other, you can just use one to hack the other over and over infinitely at a relatively fast pace as well. It's always a good and fun idea. Now, I haven't talked about programs just yet, I only mentioned them in passing. Programs allow you to either increase the power of your offensive hacking abilities by, for instance, making it faster. Or programs can allow you to defend from a hack. Defensive programs you can only put on your own controlled systems, and they have different abilities. Every defensive program will run a trace on enemy hacking operations as soon as they pass by your defensive program. In addition, every defensive program has also certain other advantages. For instance, a firewall is very powerful since, as you can see, it can block a lot of hacking outcomes. So it is very recommended to defend your most important systems with that. Of course, the more powerful a program is, the more bandwidth it is going to cost. Bandwidth is not a finite resource. It's just a certain amount of points that you can allocate until you're no longer able to allocate anything else. And there are certain actions that will cost you bandwidth. For instance, running a program always costs a certain amount of bandwidth, and you can cancel a program in order to regain that bandwidth. But cancelling a hack also costs you bandwidth, and there are some other things that can cost you bandwidth as well, so always keep that in mind. With that in mind, let us see what happens when you hack the enemy home system, because this is quite crucial. As you can see, I hacked Guinea, and because this is the enemy home system, the benefits of hacking it are much higher. For instance, I can infiltrate the scanners, which not only will create a sleeper agent on the enemy empire, but it will additionally also allow me to see the location of all the enemy fleets on the galaxy. Very useful as it might imagine, but this is only where it gets started. I can also topple the government, forcing the enemy government into an anarchy and choosing some kind of political party that I decide will cause the most chaos for my enemy. For instance, if you're fighting against a very militaristic nation, why not make them pacifists? That will change, that will teach them, that will prevent them from using those powerful militarist laws against you, but that's just an example. You can also scramble navigation, which is extremely important. Let's say the enemy is in the process of launching a counterattack against your fleets. You can just prevent all of that with a single push of the button. It is also, of course, once the enemy's hero, but I like the system, this option, mostly because it prevents the enemy from moving. Supporting a revolution is a hilarious option. In a multiplayer environment, it's usually the weaker one, unless the enemy has no defensive fleets on any kind, of course. But if the enemy has fleets, it's going to be much easier for them to recover from this hacking action as opposed to the other ones. Basically, it simply spawns a bunch of... Uh, enemy hostile fleets around your enemy systems, and it is hilarious. It is also very helpful if you try to invade the enemy home system of, on the ground, of course, as well. And finally, you are able to steal technology. Probably one of the most desirable outcomes, especially if you are behind in terms of technology and your enemy has some technologies that you are yet to unlock. You can simply pick what you want, grab it, and this will be yours now. And for Just for... Just to showcase you the sleeper mechanic, I'm going to now infiltrate the enemy scanners, granting me vision over all enemy fleets, for instance revealing this ship right over here, which I didn't wasn't able to see before. More importantly, I can now have a look at the enemy system from up close. So if you can see right here, I now see that the enemy is working on sustainable farms, they have two vine ships in their shipyard, and guess what, I have a sleeper. This is how this population is marked. The enemy does not know that they have a sleeper agent on their empire, but they can guess. At some point, they can also try to get rid of the sleeper and uh, then I'll have to put a new sleeper in there. 
You don't have to just stay at one sleeper per system, however. You can have as many sleepers as there are populations on the enemy system. And the more sleepers you have, the better it gets. Because if I press the space button, you can see a new tab has appeared, sleeper tab, which shows you exactly how many sleepers you have on each empire. Once you reach a certain threshold, your leapers will start, not leapers, sleepers will start siphoning some of the enemy resources. And uh, this is a very important way of weakening the enemy's economy while also strengthening your own. And again, this is stealing. The enemy will lose those resources, meaning that theoretically, the enemy will also be able to find out about this. They do not get any notification that they have a sleeper embedded in their system, even if they are a human player. However, if they are a human player, what they can do, and this is a tip for you as well, is to hover over your dust production uh, box and if you see a minus a small amount of dust that you're losing per turn and you see something silly written next to it for instance ocean moisturizing or dubious accounting practices or something along those nature and uh, those this nature so something that doesn't make sense or is just clearly hilarious this means that you have sleeper agents in your empire that are trying to siphon your funds so what do you do when you have sleepers in your empire, you may ask? Well, there are certain things you can do to prevent sleepers from stealing from you. For instance, you can launch programs such as uh, domestic surveillance, sleeper reintegration program. This will lower your system's approval quite severely, but this will allow you to reverse a sleeper every few turns. It is a very powerful thing to do, but at a very high cost of losing a lot of approval, so it's not something you can just do very frequently. So there are good and bad sides to paranoia, but generally speaking, if you see that you're not losing any dust, or maybe if you're losing very little dust, then there is very little reason to actually run this kind of uh, anti-sleeper program. But if you believe that you have been infiltrated and the infiltration is severe, I do encourage you to figure out which programs were the most vulnerable to hacking operations and then launch domestic surveillance on those programs. For instance, right now, I can, deter I can determine that, well, some of my one of my programs somewhere uh, where is it i do have one defensive program somewhere yes this system is protected by a defensive program if there was a hack ongoing i would be notified of this so it's very unlikely that the enemy would be able to place sleepers in here without my knowledge so there's no need to launch a counter sleeper operation in here because it's unlikely that there are sleepers on this system but this system is unprotected. It's possible that there are sleepers in here. So that's why maybe you want to launch this program on this system. Now, I've covered pretty much everything you need to know about hacking, except for, again, the Umbroquara hacking, which is something I'll cover in a separate guide. But before I end this video, I need to talk about stealth. Stealth is amazing. Stealth allows your ships to go from point A to point B without being detected. This allows them to ignore everything. So, for instance, if the enemy has a defensive fleet over their system that would normally run a blockade, I don't have to worry about it. I can just ignore the blockade and go anywhere I want without the enemy even knowing I was there. It's a very powerful feature. And once you install cloak on your ships, which looks somewhat like this, I'll showcase this real quick. So there are different cloaking modules. The one I'm using right now is called Cloaked Ambush which gives your entire fleet a cloaking level of 3, the highest cloaking level possible. And this allows your fleet to be invisible. So once you install this kind of module on your ships, there are also smaller modules of course, I'll showcase that right away, for instance on a patrol ship, I installed just a regular cloaking ship, a cloaking module which uh, gives it less cloaking power, but still a substantial amount of course, 2 is still quite high and difficult to detect. So once you do that, you can simply press on the cloak button and then you will be invisible and you'll be able to start ignoring any fleets. While cloaked, you are unable to either guard or invade a system. In order to change that, you have to actually decloak, but this will cost you all of your remaining movement points. However, once you decloak, you can again start guarding a system and potentially also invade a system, if you want to do that, of course. So. The cloak also has some abilities that you can use in a battle itself. For instance, if you have a quick look see at the module I'm using on my cruisers, it's called a cloaked ambush, which allows you to stay invisible and during a fight and prevent the enemy from firing upon you until you reach your des desired range, as illustrated by battle cards. So for instance, if I had this module and used the turtle battle card, my ships would not be fired upon until 
I were to reach short range, at which point I would be most effective. So you can see some very powerful tactics that you could utilize in those scenarios that allow you to minimize your own casualties and maximize your weapons optimization. Which is uh, very nice indeed, I dare say myself. Now, how do you counter enemy stealth abilities? Well, in the same way you get stealth abilities. If you want to get stealth, you have to go into your military tree and you have to look for things such as cloaker modules, which allow you to unlock cloaking mechanisms for your ships. If you want to deal with that, you have to just look to slightly to the right and you will be able to find anti-cloaker mechanisms. Keep in mind, when you, on the same technology era where you reach a set, cloak of certain point, you will only be able to reach a detection point of one level lower. So it's harder to detect your, the enemy fleets than it is to actually cloak. So in order, for instance, to counter the cloak of fourth era, you need to go all the way to fifth era in order to be able to see that. There are also some other anti-cloaking abilities. For instance, my ships currently have an ability that allows them to launch anti-cloaking measures that stay orbit and orbit the system and always detect enemy cloaked systems or ships. Because systems can be cloaked too now that the Umbroqua is in the game. But with that being said, I believe I've covered everything I needed to in this guide and showcased every single important mechanic and hopefully explained how it works. If you want to know more about the Ember Choir, I encourage you to check out my next video, which hopefully will be live momentarily. But for the time being, this was Pangolin Advisor, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you online.